The history of irrigation on the Po River begins with the Canadian Pacific Railway. In 1869, the Hudson's Bay Company sold the land of its fur trading monopoly to the new nation of Canada. Canada decided to tie its territories together with a railroad. The task was handed to a new company, Canadian Pacific Railway. The CPR's deal with Canada included a land grant of 25 million acres. The contract said arable land, farmland, and the CPR argued that much of the land it had received was in no way arable. The compromise was for the railway company to receive three million acres beside its right-of-way, land that would be arable if irrigated. From the start, the irrigation block was divided into three sections, west, central, and east. Work on the western section began in 1904. First, a diversion weir on the Bow River at Calgary. Next, the digging of the main canal that would lead water by gravity to reservoir number one, Chestermere Lake. In the eastern part of the irrigation block, construction began to roll in 1910. Amazing structures were built, including the Bassano Dam and the Brooks Aqueduct. While building the first irrigation facilities, the CPR began advertising for irrigation farmers in central and eastern Canada, the United States, and across the Atlantic in Britain, Ireland, and Europe. To prove that irrigation farming would work in Alberta, the CPR and federal government built a demonstration farm at the new town of Strathmore, east of Calgary. 700 acres were brought under irrigation. And settlers did come. They came because of water, for drinking, for bathing, for crops, livestock, gardens, and trees. Homesteading in a dry land was a fearful prospect, and the promise of irrigation water made all the difference. For most of the 1920s, irrigation farmers fared well. But the 1929 market crash and the Great Depression knocked commodity prices so far through the floor that farming was not profitable, no matter how you did it. CPR revenues plummeted, and the irrigation block was no longer profitable. The CPR wanted out. The farmers in the eastern section of the block made a deal to take over the irrigation facilities and the running of the system. On May 1st, 1935, the independent farmer-owned Eastern Irrigation District was born. The CPR wanted all the way out of the irrigation business, but the farmers in the Western Bloc were not as keen to take over. It took until 1944 when a group of farmers eventually agreed to take over and create the Western Irrigation District. The history of the Bow River Irrigation District is very different from the other two Bow Basin districts because it had nothing to do with the CPR. The original founder of what evolved into the BRID was a private cattle company. With the support of some wealthy investors, the future looked bright for a time. Then came a series of reversals. Stability came to the irrigation project through government intervention. In 1950, it was taken over by the Government of Canada and operated and improved by the Prairie Farm Rehabilitation Administration. In 1968, ownership was transferred once again from the federal government to the Alberta provincial government. The Bow River Irrigation District was also born in 1968, covering the western portion of the project. It took over the remaining land and irrigation facilities in 1974. From these origins, the Bow River's three irrigation districts have grown steadily in acreage and technical sophistication. They are among the world leaders in the art of high-tech, highly efficient irrigation. <laughs>